Damn, there it is. That sounds better from back there now, doesn't it? Y'all, I um, want to remind everyone that there is a sign-up sheet on the desk out front if you plan on being here for our April 12th service at 6 a.m. I want to encourage you to be here if you can. And if you can't, then you're going to miss a great time together. I know there are going to be some folks in Tucson that morning uh, at the tail end of LTC, but for those of you who are in town, please, uh, please try to come out for that. It's going to be, it's going to be a good time uh, that morning. Also, remember the fifth Sunday of this month is going to be a special contribution going to the youth mission trip in July, so I'll be planning ahead for that and uh, be making some plans in, in, that, uh, in that way. Y'all have to tell you, Laura is in Cookville, Tennessee today. She's there over the weekend for a wedding. And this morning she worshipped at the College Side Church, the, one of the churches that was uh, really affected a lot by the tornado. They lost some of their members there, and some of their members are still struggling with, uh, with property loss and, and family issues. But I want to I wanna share with you. This, Laura sent me this this morning. It was from their bulletin. Their regular attendance is about 650. Their regular contribution, this is last Sunday, the five days after the tornado. Their regular contribution was $27,207.37. Their disaster relief contribution was $195,000. $18.25. I'm just going to tell you, folks, that is, uh, that's some loving your neighbor right there. And uh, I don't know how many of you all have been able to read the, um, one of the articles that was written by one of the gentlemen there at College Side, but I've got it. I'm going to share it on our family Facebook page. It is, it's, it's wonderful. Talking about how the community has pulled together and how they have, have grown to this and how there wasn't, there wasn't a, a, a guy, why did you do this? It's a, what do we do to help you? What do we do now to, to share in this love that we have? And I think that's just a, a wonderful example of what family is about and how God put all this together for our, our benefit. So I'll share that with you. Be watching for that um, this week. Whether you like him or not is irrelevant to me. Whether you voted for him or not is completely irrelevant to me, but President Trump has declared today the National Day of Prayer. So love him or hate him, I couldn't care less. But he has said today is our National Day of Prayer. So... What we're going to look at today is a couple of examples of prayer from specific examples and, and what they mean to us this morning. So we're going to start off in 2 Chronicles. We're going to be in chapter 6. Now what's happened here is Solomon has just completed the construction of the temple. It, the temple has been dedicated the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And we've talked about this so much that the priests had to leave because they couldn't, they couldn't continue their service because the glory of the Lord was so present and filled the temple so much. And so this is, now Solomon has addressed the people. In, in chapter 6, beginning in, in verse 14, Solomon begins a prayer. And he begins, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You know, it's a, it's a long prayer. We're going to stop right there for just a minute because I look at this, look at this verse and, and Bob alluded to this in his prayer and I appreciate it so much. Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you. And if you just look at that one sentence alone, and we realize, folks, when we, when we read this, this one brief outtake of this prayer, there is no God like our God. There is no God anywhere. There are a lot of little G-gods. 
Let's face it, there are a lot of little G gods that people have put their trust in. They've, they turn to in times of stress. They turn to in times of trouble. They devote their time, their energy, their passion to these little G gods. When folks, we serve the big G God and the only big G God there is. And Solomon says, there is no one in heaven or on earth like you. And he is absolutely correct. And he said, you keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You see, you catch that, that little condition right there? Your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. Now, if you remember, back in 1 Chronicles 28, we were talking about when David was giving Solomon the instructions on building the temple. And he, and he says to ser serve God with a, remember, a loyal heart and a willing mind. So loyal means completely devoted and all in. So we can't say, well, God, I'm going to be all in with you sometimes, and other times I'm going to be all in with me. We are either in with God or we're not. And he keeps his covenant with those who walk with him with all their hearts. So because if the covenant between God and us is broken, it is not God's fault. Because God has promised us and given us this hope and this assurance, but He's offered it to us. He doesn't force it on us. He doesn't hold us down and, and make us say uncle and say, okay, I'll accept your covenant. And, so, and, and God doesn't do it. He offers it to us. He says, I'm, I'm giving you this. This is for you. For you to accept, and, and those who walk uprightly, those, in matter of fact, in Psalm 15, the question is asked, who can abide in your holy hill? And he says, the first answer is, those who walk uprightly. Folks, if we expect to have a relationship with God, if we expect to have the relationship with Him that He desires, we have to walk before Him with our whole heart. We can't just be part of the way in. So look, as he, as he goes on here, he has a couple of verses about the promise that God has made to David. That there'd, be, there'd always be somebody from, from that family on the throne. But look at verse 17. And now, O Lord, God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God in oh, this verse is killed? Will God indeed dwell with men on earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple that I've built. The heavens cannot contain you. Who am I to think that this building I've built can contain you? And you remember now in, in 1 Corinthians. 3, 16, and 17, we studied that at, at length. We are the temple of God. And so God dwells in us. God lives in us. God puts his presence in us when we're added to him. But Solomon says, I've built you this house to live. I've built you this temple. But do I really believe that you can be contained in, in this building? How foolish to think that we can box God up in a neat little package. But folks, isn't that the way we do it sometimes? Now, I'm just going to say this convicts me because there are times that, that I'll, I'll take... I, I did a whole, whole lesson time on the God box. The God box was a little box and it had a little lid on it. And on the top of the lid it said God. And I put God in that little box and I carried him with me. When I needed him, I'd get him out. You know, I'd carry the little box with me, and when it was convenient, I'd open the box up and I'd commune with God. But other times, when it wasn't as convenient for me, I'd close that box up and keep him boxed up there, but keep him handy just in case I needed him at a, at a moment's notice. I also had a little handy travel size box that would fit in my pocket. Just in case I was going somewhere and I needed to take him with me, I'd box him up in my little box and take him with me just in case I needed him somewhere else. And it was actually an infomercial that I was doing. And I said, if you order now, 
You can also get the God card. But be careful when you play the God card because it can be used against you as well. But the whole point is, y'all, my God, our God, does not fit in a box. He does not fit just in me. He does not fit just in you, just in these temples we built. God is above all and in all, and the heaven of the heavens cannot contain our God. Amen. And Solomon says, hey, I, I realize this. Do I really think that this little temple I've built can contain you? And he says, yet... I like this yet. Hey, even though you are so magnificent, God, you are so powerful, you are so wonderful, you are so far above, yet would you, would you listen? Says, would you regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication? You know, if you ask that question again, who am I, that, or who do I, how do I think that you could be contained in this temple? Well, folks, who are we that we should come before God? Really. But I'll answer that question. We are the, the bought, saved, redeemed saints of Jesus Christ who can approach the throne of God boldly because of Jesus. So that we, do, we can do that. What a, that's a blessing, y'all. I'm just going to tell you, but listen to this. Regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication. O Lord, my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you that your eyes may be open toward this temple day and night, toward the place where you said you had put your name, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes toward this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. says that God has put his name on these people. God has put his name on us. We are his family. We are his body. We are his kingdom. We are his chosen people. He has named us. He has bought us. He has redeemed us. We are his. He owns us. And so when we look at that, what the, the question is there, would you please hear us when we pray, hear our supplications, and Father, look at that last part there. When you hear, forgive. Isn't that powerful? That Solomon, in his wisdom and in his, his instructions, has built this magnificent dwelling place for God, and yet he says, please, God, when you hear our prayer, just forgive us. Just forgive. Skip over to, to verse 41. This is the end of, of Solomon's prayer. It says, Now therefore arise, O Lord God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation and let your saints rejoice in goodness. Now, we know that at this particular time, there was a priesthood that served in the temple. Who is the priesthood now? We are. We are the royal priesthood. And Solomon's prayer is, let your priests, that would be us, let your priests be clothed with salvation. And your saints, who's that? That's us again. Your saints rejoice in goodness. And I read this and I think, wow. That's, that speaks to us. That is not just Solomon praying to God for this particular people. That speaks to us and where we are right now. Arise, God, arise and, and dwell in your resting place. Dwell in us, live in us, thrive in us. And let us be clothed with your salvation and let us rejoice in goodness. 
Now, all over in, in, in the book of Jonah, in the account of Jonah going to, to Nineveh, remember, we, we, we've known the story since we were kids, you know, Jonah decided not to go. He was thrown overboard, and God had a fish prepared for him, and he spent three days in the belly of this fish, and he prayed to God, and he said, God, I, I, I'm here, and, and I'm, I'm covered in seaweed, and I'm in, I'm in the depths of the billows, and I'm, I'm in this horrible place, and I've seen the foundation of the mountains. I've been that deep in the ocean. Father, I've been there. But then in verse 9, the very last thing, thing he says is, but salvation is from the Lord. And at that moment, it says, the fish vomited him out on dry the ground. Salvation is from the Lord. So I wonder sometimes, folks, I, I, I struggle with this part. I think, do we, when we pray, I mean, and I hope that we all pray often. I hope that we have a, a, a life, of, a, a prayerful life. And many times, and the show, I'm just going to tell you, I get caught up in this. I'll be honest, I get caught up in asking for this, and I ask for that, and I ask, and I ask, and I ask, and I ask. And many times, church, I just forget to recognize God as who He is. And I forget sometimes just to praise Him and honor Him without asking Him for something. Because it seems like a lot of folks, in, like I said, me included, I get wrapped up into, oh, I really need to pray about this so God can help me fix it. Or I need to pray about this so God can handle it. And I forget sometimes just to pray to God because He's God. Just to talk to Him because He is the Creator. And I, I get wrapped up in this other stuff, and I think, why, why, how can I forget that when I'm talking with God, I don't just, you know, when I would call my dad when, when, when he was still alive, I'd call him, we'd talk about things. I wouldn't just call him up and say, hey, Dad, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. I would call him up, and we'd talk about things. And I just enjoyed talking to him because he was my father, not because I needed something from him. So I would encourage us, don't get so consumed by praying to God for something, but let's just pray to God because he is God. Because I'm just going to tell you, he deserves, he deserves our praise. He deserves our honor. He deserves our devotion. Not because we expect Him to do something for us. Not because I'm going to say, God, I'm going to praise you because I know you're going to do some good stuff for me. Sometimes I just need to say thank you. Thank you for not just striking me dead on some days because I deserve it. Thank you for blessing me the way you do because I don't deserve that. Thank you for salvation that I'll never be able to earn, but because you give it freely, I have it. Thank you for sacrificing your only son so that I can go to heaven. Thank you, God, for just being you. And so when we look at this national day of prayer, you know, let's make every day a day of prayer. And I'm just going to say... I, that, and again, I get, I get wrapped up in, in things that, throughout the day. And there are days I'll get late in the day and think, wow, I haven't even talked to my father today. We have, I haven't had that, that big G God conversation. Now, I've, I've spent time with my other little G, little G gods. But I haven't spent time with my, with my big G God. Because, let's just face it, there is a force in the world that wants to distract us from our God. There is a force in the world, a force of darkness, that wants to take us away from that relationship with God. And God has sealed this covenant with us. God has given us His Spirit. When we are baptized into Christ, God gives us part of Himself and puts that in us so that we can have that communion with Him, that relationship with Him, and why would we not want to thank Him every day for that? 
Because he deserves not just our prayers of what we want, but our prayers of praise Amen. and our prayers of honor and our prayers of thanks. Amen. So I'm going to pray right now. But before I do, I want, I, want to, I want somebody to be bold today, okay? If there is anybody in this audience today that is struggling spiritually, I want you to stand up and walk down here and pray with me. If you're struggling financially, I want you to stand up and walk down here, down the front, and pray with me. If you are stressed because of something in the world, I want you to stand up and walk down here and pray with me. If there's anything today that's keeping you from having the life that God wants you to have, then I want you to stand up right now and walk down here and let's pray together about it right now. Wow. Wow. Y'all got to come. Y'all got something. Wow. Okay, and let's pray together. Father, we are humbled before you today. We are amazed that we can be in your presence. And Father, there's a, a group here today those of us who are standing and those who are sitting who need you desperately. And regardless of what the situation is that we're facing, regardless, of Father, of whether it's a, a spiritual battle or a physical battle, financial stress, family dysfunction, Father, it doesn't matter what our issues are. We know that no matter what, you are our God. Amen. And, and you have it under control. So, Father, we just want to thank you today for your majesty and your glory and your mercy. And, Father, we, we just pray that our hearts can be pierced by your word and that our hearts can be filled by your spirit. And, Father, we just... We just want to be better children of yours. We want to be a better family of yours. We want to show the love of Jesus to the world better. We want to show it to each other better. We want to know each other and love each other. Because, Father, we know that the world will see you by the way we love each other. And so, Father, we come before you today with humility but also with boldness and courage because Jesus Christ is our mediator and he comes to you for us and your spirit, Father, comes to you on our behalf telling you what we really need. And so, Father, we're thankful for that. We're thankful that we have you as our Father. We're thankful that we have Jesus as our Savior and your spirit as our guide and comforter. So, Father, as we, as we spend this time together in prayer, don't let just this moment be our prayers together. But let us continue to pray with each other and for each other daily, consistently, and frequently, and fervently. So, Father, with all the humility that we can find with all the honor that we can muster we praise you and we glorify you and we thank you through the name of Jesus Amen Amen. Now if there's anyone else that did not feel comfortable doing it the different way. 
Y'all, that, that option is always available. To let your cares and your concerns be made known to God. And so we're going to sing a song here just in a minute, just like we always do. So if you're more comfortable with that, come on down during the song. If you're not moved to come down during the song, but you're moved, and when you get home today, fall on your knees in your living room and pray to God on your own, or on your drive home, or whatever the case might be. But don't miss an opportunity to have a conversation with our Father. You know, I mentioned a moment ago, those who are, those who are baptized into Christ have been given a, a piece of God himself to live in them. What a glorious and wonderful gift that is from God. If you need that today, won't you come when we stand and sing? <clears throat>